All right, Will. Let's try this again. So, Will. All right. Shh. Will, this is for you. Yep. Uh, so, we started off by saying cosecant is 1 over y in the unit circle. So basically, I'm looking for the places where y is negative 1 half. It's reciprocal. So if I go and I look on my unit circle, I guess I should look at that real quick. Do, 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 do. I see 2, 10, and 7 pi over 6. And then I see 3, 30, and 11 pi over 6. And I say, okay, boom, donezos. Okie dokes. That's the gist of it. You feel good? Yeah. Good enough? All right. Who's next? Other questions from homeworks? Other questions from homeworks? Okay, fair enough then. Today we're going to finish up with section 4.1. Um, as a heads up, this week you should expect to see a homework quiz. So if that if you're comfortable on worksheets one and two, you should be good to go on any homework quiz. Okay, so nothing that we're doing today, but just using worksheets one and two. Okie dokes. We got a couple of like loose threads here to address on section four one. Be I don't know forty minutes or so of me, and then I'll sign off and let you guys get some make some progress on homeworks. Sound good? All right. So we're going to start with a little bit of notation. Um, I don't know. Anyway, some notation. Uh, if you see the prefix arc attached to a trig function, that just means inverse. So like arc sine of 0.5 is the same thing as sine inverse of 0.5. Mean the same thing. It's just an two different notations from different places. They got absorbed. Some textbooks will use one all the time or the other all the time, and some will use them both interchangeably. Doesn't really matter. I think you'll see both of them in the homeworks. You can treat them as the same thing. Everybody happy? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's look at a couple of uh, example problems or some other types of things you'll have to do for the homework. So the first kind of problem I want to look at is where I have a composition of a trig function and an inverse trig function. So when we say composition, I mean like one function is nested inside of the other one. So for example, let's say we have cosine of sine inverse of 0.5. Everybody cool? Okay. So I'm going to start by dealing with the inside piece. So sine inverse is going to be giving me an angle measure, right? Giving me a theta. Now, unlike your worksheets one and two, you'll notice here that I wasn't given a range of values over which to find sine theta or to find this theta, right? Like on the homework, it'll say like comma, you know, like 
3 pi over 2 less than theta less than 5 pi over 2 or something like that, right? Um, if you run into a situation like this and there is no range of values for your answer stated, the assumption is to use the fundamental ranges from the inverses that we would have given you in the last lesson. So for sine inverse, we're going to be using negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Everybody's okay there? Okay. So if we think about this, sine, uh, well, if my answer could be negative, right? It, so going backwards, or it could be positive, so I start at zero and I go forwards. So that interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two is covering quadrants four and one. And then here I notice that sine theta is a positive value because it's 0.5. I remember from all silly turtles crawl, sine is positive in quadrants um, one and two. So my answer here should be in quadrant one. Everybody feel okay there? So I'm going to go to my unit circle, and I'm going to look in quadrant one for where the y-coordinate is one-half. Can somebody tell me what the angle is in quadrant one where the y-coordinate is one-half? 30, but if, what if I told you I wanted it in radians? Pi over 6. So now, if sine inverse of 0.5 is pi over 6, we're left with cosine of pi over 6. So I go to my unit circle, I locate pi over 6, and I read the x-coordinate and I'll get root 3 over 2, and that's going to be my final answer. Does that feel okay there? Again, these problems are really just about using our unit circle, going forwards or backwards off our unit circle, but it's all about just using the unit circle. So very similar to what we've been doing in the delta maths and on worksheet 1, same kind of idea, just like two problems combined into one, basically. Uh, let's do another example. Notice this time I flipped it, and the inverse is on the outside, and the regular trig function is on the inside. Does that make any difference to me? No. Not really. I still start the same way. So I'll start on the inside. Uh, well, tangent of negative 3 pi over 4, I'm going to start by going to my unit circle and looking for negative 3 pi over 4 in my unit circle. Can you locate negative 3 pi over 4 on the unit circle? Has anybody found it? No, why not? There's no negatives on the unit circle. Oh, man, what am I going to do? Well, I'll tell you what to do. We're just going to find an angle that's coterminal to 3 pi over 4 that will be on the unit circle. So to find an angle coterminal to negative 3 pi over 4, what do we do? Great. So... We've identified that negative 3 pi over 4 is too small. So we're going to have to add or subtract because it's too small. We're adding a multiple of 2 pi. So let's just start with doing it once. 
To add negative 3 pi over 4 and 2 pi, what do we have to have? A common denominator. So I'll think about that as 2 pi over 1. What is the common denominator going to be? 4. So I'll multiply top and bottom by 4. So negative 3 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4. Not neither. Oh. We're just finding a coterminal angle, so we can use our unit circle. So we're doing two pi over one. That's how we find a coterminal angle. So two pi over one. Or subtract, or a multiple of it, like do it twice or three times or four times or five times. Okay, uh, so how do I, now that I've made a common denominator, we have the fraction negative three pi over four and eight pi over four. How do we add those two fractions together? So you add what parts? Yeah, you do the tops. Negative 3 pi plus 8 is? 5 pi. And what about the bottom then? Stays the same, right? Okay. So what we really are going to be doing is sine of tangent of 5 pi over 4. So I'll go to my unit circle. And I'll locate 5 pi over 4. And I know tangent is y over x. So what is 5 pi over 4 on my unit circle? Okay, the y coordinate is negative root 2 over 2. What's the x coordinate? Same thing. So what is negative root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2? 1. And remember, because we're doing sine inverse, the fundamental range for sine is from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So I remember from last time we just did that, that was quadrants 1 and 4. And because sine is positive, I remember from last time, just like before, it was quadrants 1 and 2, so my theta should be in quadrant 1. So I'm going to go to the unit circle, looking in quadrant 1, where y is 1. Who can tell me where that is? Using your unit circle. We're looking in quadrant 1 for where y is equal to 1. Pi over 2, Pi over two is correct. And that will be our final answer. Everybody's okay still? So far so good? Okay. Um, our third example here, this is the sneaky one. This is for all the math teachers trying to trick their students in this example. So if you look at this, I have arc tangent or tangent inverse of tangent of 2 pi over 3. We hope that we can do just cancel those two guys and be left with 2 pi over 3, right? It's not how it works, which is a bummer. That doesn't work that way. The reason it doesn't work that way is that our fundamental range for tangent inverse is negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, and 2 pi over 3 isn't inside of that. And if we subtract pi from it, we still might not land in, you know, we still not be the one that we want which is a bummer. You guys ready to do this then? So what do we do? Well, we just do it the same way we've done before. So I'm going to go to my unit circle. 
I'm going to find 2 pi over 3, and I'm going to do y over x. When I find 2 pi over 3 on my unit circle, what is the y coordinate there? Okay. And what is the x coordinate? Good. So that'll just simplify down to negative square root 3, right? Everybody's good? So now we have arc tan of negative square root 3. And I remember that arc tan is covering quadrants 1 and 4, just like sine did. And because I see that tangent is negative, I know that my two possibilities are quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So I'm looking for my answer in quadrant 4. So I'm going to go to the unit circle. I'm going to look in quadrant 4. And now I know the x and the y. Because I'm in quadrant 4, I know the x is positive and the y is negative. Everybody's okay with that? And I know from before to get square root of 3, I'm going to have to do root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. So my y needs to be root three, negative root 3 over 2, and my x needs to be positive 1 half. So if I go to my unit circle and I look, what angle do I end up with? Where the x is 1 half and the y is negative root 3 over 2 in quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, in radians, 5 pi over 3. What's the problem with that answer, though? Yeah, it's not in that interval, is it? Oh, man, what do we do? We can subtract 2 pi from it. It wasn't in between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, which is our fundamental range for tangent inverse. So we'll make a common denominator and... Subtract, and there we go. Aaron. Okay. That's not where it's positive at. That was this part. So just going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 is the yellow. And then my second question mm -hmm. is, how did you know that um, the positive and positive So I knew here, because we're in quadrant 4, that my x is positive, but my y is negative, right? Yeah. And I knew from up here, to get square root 3, I did root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. So I knew that the y was going to be the root 3 over 2, which had to be negative because we're in the fourth quadrant. The x had to be the 1 half, which is positive this time because we're in the fourth quadrant. Sure thing. Tia? Sure thing. Aaron, you happy? Very good. No problem. All right. Um, Let's do one more kind of problem, and then I'm done for today. So the other kind of problem is basically the same idea, but this time we're going to have expressions instead of just numbers. 
So find an algebraic expression for sine of arc cosine of 2x. So just like before, we're going to start on the inside. But we're going to approach this a little bit differently because the unit circle will not be of any use to us here. I know, it's scary. So I know that if arc cosine is equal to 2, or theta equals arc cosine 2x, that's the same thing as saying cosine theta is equal to 2x, right? And I'm going to think about 2x is 2x over 1, because I know that cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Sure. So if I draw myself a right triangle with theta as my acute angle, the adjacent side should be 2x, and the hypotenuse should be 1. Everybody so far so good? I'm going to call that third unlabeled side y. And I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what y is in terms of x's. So I have 2x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared. I'll get the y by itself by subtracting 2x squared from both sides. I'll square root both sides, and I'm going to drop the plus or minus that I generate when I square, or square root both sides of this equation. Why is it okay that I'm dropping that plus or minus here? That's an important question. I just said that I was going to do it. It is okay that I do it, but I would think it's worth mentioning why I can do it. Why was it okay for me to drop the plus or minus when I square? Have a distance. Excellent. That's exactly right. Remember, y is representing the side length of a triangle. Can't have a negative side length to a triangle. So we can absolutely drop the plus or minus there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and square that 2x to give me 4x squared squared. So that other side of my triangle is going to be the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. Everybody's okay so far? So if I want to do sine of theta now, right, I'm doing sine because that's the outside. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, the opposite side is the square root, 1 minus 4x squared. And the hypotenuse is 1, or that just simplifies down to square root of 1 minus 4x squared. So the idea is I'm going to use that inner function, the inverse function, to draw a right triangle. I use the Pythagorean theorem to find the other side of my right triangle in terms of x. And then I'll just do SOHCAHTOA afterwards once I have my right triangle fully labeled to finish the problem off. Let's do that one more time, yeah? So here we have cotangent of sine inverse 2x minus 1. So I know that sine inverse of 2x minus 1 gives me some angle theta. And I know that that equation is equivalent to saying sine theta is equal to 2x. I'm going to think about it as a fraction as 2x over 1. 
and I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to use that to draw a right triangle. The opposite side is 2 minus x. The uh, hypotenuse is 1. And that third side we'll call y. And now I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for y in terms of x's. So I'll start by subtracting the 2 minus x squared from both sides. And we'll square root both sides. I'm going to drop the plus or minus because, again, y is a distance, so it doesn't need to be negative. In fact, it can't be negative. And now I'm just going to simplify uh, the stuff that's underneath the radical. How do I simplify 2 minus x squared? Okay, let me ask you this question then that's a little easier question. How do I do, th what's 3 squared? 9. How'd you get 9? 3 times 3. So that would say then 2 minus x squared should be 2 minus x times 2 minus x, right? How do I do something like 2 minus x times 2 minus x? You FOIL that. So that's going to give me 4 minus 4x plus 4x squared. Everybody's okay there? I did the foiling quickly in my head. If you need to, to write that out, that's okay. All right. So I would have 1 minus 4 minus 4x plus x squared. Does that look good to you guys? Anybody object? No, you're all wrong because that's wrong. I've made a mistake there. I've made it on purpose. Because odds are, 8 out of 10 of you guys are going to make the same mistake. Especially if I don't show you what it is. Lucy's looking at it and it's like, there's no mistake here. I'm convinced it's correct. It is very sneaky. That's why I'm showing it to you. Jack, what's up? Mm -hmm. So here is the issue. This subtraction symbol here is applied to the entire 2 minus x squared. So I actually would need a parenthesis here and would need to distribute my negative through. Woof, Mr. Kulik. I know, it's a good trick. That's why I'm showing it to you. You guys see it now? Now that I've shown it to you, you're like, oh, sure, yep. I would have forgot to do that. And then I'll do the 1 minus 4 here and just make this negative 3 plus 4x minus x squared. Everybody's okay? I'm going to go and label my third side then. Okay. So if I have cotangent theta, I know cotangent is adjacent divided by opposite. So my adjacent side is negative 3 plus 4x minus x squared, well, x all square rooted, over 2 minus x. And that'll do it. The setting up the triangle is the tough part. Once you have the triangle set up, so Katoa from there, right? Questions on what we've done so far, Evan? Sure. Okay. Well, for you guys, I'd like you to work on 11 through 14 and then 17 through 18. That'll be now part of this coming Sunday's problem set along with worksheets one and two. 
I would like everyone to be working on some part of their math homework right now in the remaining 40 or so minutes we have left in class. If you have delta math that needs to be caught up on, you could be working on your delta math. If you have worksheets one and two that you still are like, ah, I'm still kind of grinding away at those guys, you could work on that. If you are like Mr. Cool, like I'm going to do the stuff that I'm just got done talking about while it's fresh in my head so I don't forget how to do it, that's totally fine. Then do that. But everybody should have something from this most recent couple of problem sets to work on, whether that's Delta Math, Worksheet 1, Worksheet 2, or this six problems here from the problems. Any questions for me? Okay, I'm going to log off here as you're working on stuff. If you have questions or if you want to ask, or if you have uh, want me to check some work or see if something's right or help you find a mistake or you're not sure what to do, feel free to come on up and bother me. I'm just going to be up here working on my stuff.